Hey, what's up guys, Andy here at MVP Java. So today I am going to show you how to build a custom um, Maven plugin, all right? So there's two aspects to doing this. One is the code and the other one is the palm.xml file, all right? So the dependencies that you need. So let's take a look first at the context in which I'm gonna be demonstrating this. And that is I'm using this, um, this plugin here called the FXML scanner. And if we go take a look very quickly at the XML file, I'll go through this um, as we go through the tutorial here. Uh, the regular suspects at the beginning, right? Model version, that's, that's never gonna change really. Uh, group ID, okay, so there's your group ID, your artifact, so I'm calling it FXML scanner here. And the convention is to put the name of your plugin first, followed by Maven plugin after. If you don't follow that convention, um, the people at Apache Maven get really pissed off and you might get some black suits coming to your front door or something like that. I don't know. But, you know, it's well documented not to do that, all right? Um, packaging, this is the important part, right? So Maven plugin. So you're not going to put like JAR or anything else like that in there because if you take a look at your project, see how it says Maven plugin there? And, and that's really because of this. And the rest of the stuff I'm going to go through a little bit later on. I don't want to bore you too much with some XML all in one shot. But the whole story behind this plugin is this. Here's a project that's, that, that's using the plugin. All right. So what it's doing, the plugin is going to go through the um, resources directory of this Java FX application. It's going to look for this FXML subdirectory and it's going to pick up all these FXML files for us. Then it's going to generate an auto-generated FXML enum here, so an enum called FXML enum. And you'll notice that, you know, that it has an enum with the name of the file in it. And there's a whole bunch of information in there that this program needs, all right, to switch scenes. Okay, so that's in another tutorial that I have uh, made. You're free to take a look at that. I'll put up a card up for you guys and a link in the description for that, okay? So how do we go about doing something like this? Well, here's where we start looking at the code now. Here's a skeletal structure of how you're going to come up with your Maven plugin. So this is a plain old Java object, right? We call that Pojo. It's been called that for a long time. And Maven says, well, we'll, we'll call it a Pojo too, but we'll call it a Maven Pojo. And then they came up with this word called Mojo, okay? So they have an annotation that allows you to replace a lot of the XML that you have to write in the palm.xml files, okay? So it's much better to go through with this annotation. The first attribute here will actually describe or identify the name of your goal, right? So when you have your, when someone is gonna be using this plugin, they're gonna to have to specify the name of the goal in which it is going to be executed against, okay? The other thing is, is there's some other attributes, right? But we're gonna go through some of those other attributes in one minute. For now, just going through the bases, right? So you see here we're, ex we're extending abstract mojo and we have to override this execute method. And really in here is where you come up with the business logic, your, your reason for being, right? What are you trying to do here? Now, the abstract mojo, there's two things that you actually get from there. One is a logger that allows you to interact with the outside world. So you got everything in there that you would expect from the logger, right? It's a, it's a pretty, um, it's not a... Um, it's not a high tech log or anything like that, but uh, it's got everything you need in there. Info, warning, debug, all that stuff, okay? And uh, you got two exceptions, really, that to get thrown if things go wrong. You got one if the build has, uh, has an exception, right? So that's the mojo execution exception. So it'll spit out an error message in the build process, right? And, uh, but it will allow the build to continue. Whereas this one here, the failure exception, that'll stop the build and that would be an error, for example, if you had a compilation error, okay? Now I said the abstract mojo has two things it gives us, right? So the logger, pretty easy to understand that part, right? The other one is something called a plugin context. So the plugin context is a way for us to get information on our mojo and other mojos as well, right? And we get that from an inversion of control container. So whenever we talk about IOC containers, we're talking about dependency injection, right? Via some plugin manager. So we're gonna see in a minute how this is gonna get really cool really fast because we're gonna be using some dependency injection to be able to get information from our environment. But this doesn't mean we don't need the skeletal structure. We still need that, okay? So 
let me close this guy here because we're not gonna that was just to, to show you the base right I could actually delete this file from the project now my real mojo is this one called fxml scanner mojo so let's take a look at that one and you'll notice that now I'm calling my goal fxml scanner so I'll show you in a second how you actually use this plugin in your own pom.xml file very simple and the reason why it's simple is because I'm using the annotation attributes to simplify it so you don't have to specify at what phase this goal should be called upon. Okay, so you'll notice here default phase. I have lifecycle phases in enum. So I'm using the default Maven lifecycle, which is comprised of 23 phases. Now, since I'm auto generating code, right, I need to execute this in the generate sources uh, phase. Now you can look here, there's a whole bunch of them. So. I think it's the third phase out of those 23 and it's very close to just before the the compile phase right i also have the thread safe attribute here so if i'm using this let's say in a um, in an environment where the builds are occurring in parallel i'll be safe here as well so there's other attributes here that all have a default value pretty much and um they'll also uh, alleviate the need to specify these in the palm.xml file so you know go take a look at the api it's pretty dry reading but uh, pretty simple to understand as well so the other thing that i said about the abstract module was the dependency injection right so here's the dependency injection in action oh a certain level of dependency injection because we can get more sophisticated okay but that'll be for for another tutorial right this is just introduction to building your own uh, maven plugin we have this at parameter annotation which allows us to go get access to that plugin context that i was talking about okay so you notice here i want something of type maven project so that'll allow me to get all that kind of metadata on my maven project and if you see here, the default value is not just simply a default value you're supplying, but it kind of has the look and the feel of a spring spell exception, um, expression, excuse me. So those curly braces, um, you know, which have the dollar sign there, is a hint to the dependency injection container to actually inject for you the Maven project, okay? So if I take this here, project, and let's say I just, I know, just plop it up over here, because I'm not actually using it directly in this uh, plugin. I just wanted to show it to you. And I say dot, I have a whole bunch of stuff that I can go do now. I can go get the base directory. I can go get the build. Uh, so for example, if I say dot build and I say dot get, uh, I think it's resources, right? Now that'll allow me to get a list of resources and that's exactly what this plugin is trying to do, right? It's trying to go through the list of resources, pick up the FXML files, build the list, all that kind of stuff. So I could go get it like this. I could get anything now from that project dependency. But if I'm a little bit wiser, what I could do is I could pinpoint exactly what I need so I don't have to write that code. So I can say project.resources. So that actually does the dot get build, dot get resources. You're asking for exactly what you want, okay? So I'm obviously gonna get it in dependency injected here. And you can see down here, I'm actually using it directly to loop through every resource there. And I walk through that path and I build a structure to encapsulate all that data before auto generating the code okay what it actually does and how it does that it doesn't matter this doesn't really have to do with the maven plugin tutorial it's just the business logic in there if you really want to see more of that i'm going to uh, talk about more of that in another tutorial so what uh, what other things you can do with that parameter is go take and extract custom configuration elements right so i'll take a look at these three guys i got package name filter and enum name let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's say in this, um, this is a tutorial that I came up with, right, in a previous uh, video, that I'm using this very plugin, except I made the plugin uh, better in this one because of the, uh, the context of the tutorial, right, Maven plugin. So here I'm actually using it, right? Here I'm using a plugin called Calm MVP Java Plugins. That's the one I, I was just showing you, right? There's the name, my artifact ID. And you'll notice in this configuration element here, uh, I have some sub tags, right? And I have a mandatory one called package name. And the package name really is pointing to, you know, this package here to generate this FXML enum that's going to hold all those um, enums for the XML files, right? Um, oops, excuse me. I have diverged. 
And I have another two which are optional, which I've commented out for now, okay? But what if you didn't want to comment them out, right? Let's say you say you wanted the user or the user wanted, he decides, right? If they wanted to do a filter on those FXML files, not wanting to go get all of them. So for example, here, uh, let's say I had a filter with IN. So just go get the files that have the letters IN in there. Now, I didn't want to rename all my files, okay? <laughs> so it would have broke my other application. So I had to pick something that would pick up, let's say just login and main. But obviously you would, you would put something totally different. And then the enum name, I also allow the user to pick their own name for their enum. See, this one is called FXML enum, but you might not want that name, right? So in this case here, if I uh, now run, right, if I clean and build this project with those new parameters underneath the configuration tags, you'll uh, notice a couple of things that happen. One, there's a new enum that got created, right? And if you take a look, the only constants in there are login and main, right? So it, it did look at our filter. It also took into account our new name, right? And uh, I kept it in the auto gen directory. So that, that didn't really change. So everything got taken into account, but how did the Maven plugin know how to do that, right? Very simply by using dependency injection here, I'm able to go and ask exactly what I want just by name over here. So this one is required, right? You can't forget to put the package name, but the filter in the enum name Remember I had them commented out before. Those are optional. So if you don't specify them, I basically default to all, which means I go pick them up, like all the FXML files underneath that subdirectory. And by default, I give you the name of FXML enum. So just with that, you can build some pretty awesome plugins by using the small amount of information that I've just showed you. There's just one piece that's missing to make it work. And that's the stuff you got to put into your actual palm.xml file. I love this plugin, right? So just to make sure you're following me here, this is this is the plugin we're developing. It has its own palm.xml file, right? And that's what we're looking at here. So um, over here, I talked about the usual suspects up here, right? Uh, you're definitely going to need these three dependencies, okay? One is Maven Core. Uh, and this one is needed because I was injecting the um, Maven project, okay? That type Maven project needed it there. But there's also some other core files that you, uh, core classes that you might need as you're continuing on with your own plugins. The Maven plugin API, so that you're going to need for the uh, abstract mojo, right? So very, very important. Um, then you're going to have the Maven plugin annotations. Well, that's kind of self-evident, right? The at mojo annotation or the at parameters that I just showed you, right? You need those annotations. Then I have my business logic dependencies. Don't need, you'll have your own, right? And then this is the bad boy over here. This is called the Maven plugin plugin, right? Not to be confusing or anything. It's the plugin you need to build your Maven plugins. So uh, I got to love that name. So over here, you see that they're um, executing this mojo against a goal called descriptor. And that's a good name for it because what happens is, is it builds a plugin descriptor, which holds all the metadata from the plugin that I just showed you. So it, it generates all that XML file, uh, all that XML, all those, excuse me, <laughs> all those XML elements, puts them in the XML file, puts that in the jar file and updates your plugin registry. Okay, so you don't have to do any of that. And uh, you wouldn't want to anyways, right? So once that's done, you're going to, you know, just clean and build it. And then, like I said, the Maven plugin plugin is going to do its magic and put it in the repository for your efforts generated your descriptor, right? And then you're free to use it in your own project. Now, there's just one little thing I might have glossed over here. As I was going through the configuration elements, I should have mentioned here that don't forget you need this executions um, element here and you're basically calling the goal, FXML scanner. Don't forget my mojo had a name attribute, right? And I said you have to have the name because the name is equal to your goal and it matches up to your uh, mojo that you're trying to execute against it. So you have to have that and the rest just works beautifully. All right, so I really hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, a lot of powerful stuff in this tutorial. Now you're, you're free to look at the source code. I'm going to put a link in the description as always. As for pretty much all my tutorials, you can always get the source code from there. If you appreciated the video, please give me a thumbs up. I really uh, enjoy getting some feedback for you if you have comments too. And uh, if you want to share this information, please share the video as well. 
Uh, and um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe as well because you'll get notified of the next videos that I come out with. Usually, I usually come out with about twice a month, okay? So you'll, you'll get a heads up on those. I really appreciated your time, guys, and uh, check you out next time.